This is video two then. Um, we're going to look at the heart structure uh, in this video. Now I've got a link under the video to uh, a 3D heart structure video tutorial I've done. Um, it may be a good idea that you look at that as well. Uh, you don't have to but um, if you do look at this video first because um, the heart can be a bit complicated and uh, I'm going to use um, uh, more simple diagrams in this video just to get uh, people to understand the basics first. I will, however, use some screenshots from the other video to uh, help me explain heart structure in this video. So you will see some of the images that I use in the other video. OK, we're first going to look at the external features of the heart. Um, so on the um, right hand side, this is one of the screenshots from the 3D uh, video. Um, the one on the left is uh, a 2D image of the heart. So in terms of the external features, uh, the first thing I want to talk about is something called the coronary circulatory system. Um, coronary circulatory system is the heart's own circulatory system it's what delivers oxygen to the heart muscle because what you've got to remember is that even though the heart pumps blood around the body it needs a blood supply of its own it needs lots of oxygen it's very metabolically active so that's known as the coronary circulatory system and um, if we use the left hand diagram for the moment you can see running right down uh, the middle uh, of the heart is uh, a coronary artery. Now that coronary artery there uh, is often used to divide the heart into the left and the right side. So that sort of marks the border between left and right side. Um, on my 3D image then we can see um, the coronary artery here. This is another one. There's several coronary arteries in the heart. Uh, this one here is actually uh, connected to the um, one of the blood vessels in the heart. As I'll describe later, this vessel is actually the aorta. Uh, so it allows uh, oxygenated blood to get to the heart, okay, because it's connected to the aorta. Um, the one vessel here in blue, that's going to be the coronary vein, now that's going to take blood back to the uh, the right side of the heart um, to go back to the lungs. Okay, so all of these here on the surface and on this one are the coronary blood vessels. Okay, um, other external features. What you can see, uh, this region here, uh, that now is the atrium. Um, this, of course, is the right side of the heart, as I've explained in uh, video one. Uh, it's like a mirror image when you draw it. Um, so the right side of the heart, this is the right atrium. That's what it looks like um, on its outer surface. And this structure here, uh, all of that is the left atrium. OK, and here they are. They're fully labeled on the other diagram uh, for you. OK, so there's the top chambers. Now, the ventricles, basically, all of the rest of the heart here, where my arrow is, is basically the ventricles. OK, so they are the lower chambers, and they, they're a lot larger than um, the top uh, atrium chambers. OK, um, so that's the chambers. Um, we've got the coronary uh, circulatory system. What we need to look at now is the um, blood vessels that are attached to the heart. Uh, there's actually four blood vessels attached to the heart. Uh, you need to know uh, their names and you need to know whether they carry oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. And you need to know where they transport blood to and where they transport blood from as well. So if we use my 3D image here, as I've said before, this, this vessel here is something called the aorta. 
It's the major artery in the body. Uh, it carries oxygenated blood. And from the video one, because it's got oxygenated blood, it's actually part of the left side of the heart. Anything to do with oxygenated blood is the left side of the heart. Okay. Um, these here, these are two vessels that are also attached um, to the left side of the heart. They're actually going in to the um, left atrium. Now, again, they're going to be um, going to carry oxygenated blood. And these vessels actually come back from the lungs. So these are going to be the pulmonary veins. OK, and they also carry oxygenated blood because they're on the left side of the heart. OK, uh, if we go to the left hand uh, image, uh, you can see the aorta here. It's sometimes called the aortic arch. I'll show you another picture of that shortly. But there's the aorta. And um, they're not labelled, uh, but basically these two here, they are the pulmonary uh, veins. And they uh, transport blood back to the left side of the heart from the lungs. Okay. So, um, that's the left side done. Uh, the right side, uh, this vessel here, uh, that's known as the pulmonary artery. Okay, so because it's pulmonary, it's got to do with the lungs. So it actually transports deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Okay. Um, that, uh, as we'll see when we look inside the heart, that, that pulmonary artery is actually attached to the, uh, the right ventricle. Uh, and indeed, the aorta, that's going to be attached to the left ventricle. OK. Right. Um, if we look at this vessel here, um, this is known as the vena cava. Now, there's actually... Um, a vena cava at the top of the atrium and also at the bottom. You can't see it on um, this image, but I'll show you it later. Um, the, the, the vena cava that's at the top is often called the superior vena cava uh, because it's above. The one down the bottom, which will be around about here somewhere, is often called the inferior vena cava. Um, but I'll show you those later. You need to know that these, um, or this vessel, actually carries deoxygenated blood. And it's, it's through this vena cava that blood, low in oxygen, returns to the heart. Okay, so uh, the deoxygenated blood is coming from the head, it's coming from the rest of the body, and it enters then the right uh, atrium. OK, um, just want to show you now uh, uh, some better images of these uh, blood vessels. Right, so these are 3D images again. Um, the image on the left here is looking at the heart from the front. And this one uh, on the right is looking from the back end of it. So here, um, this is what's called the uh, aortic arch. Now... The aorta comes out of the uh, left side of the heart and it curves around and it goes behind the heart and it goes then down the rest of the body. So the back view, you can see the aorta running right down the body. Um, also on the back view, you can now see the inferior vena cava. OK, so that that is where blood is coming back from the body to the heart. And here is the superior vena cava. 
uh, and that blood is coming down there from the head okay so there's the uh, aortic arch and the aorta and the inferior and superior uh, vena cava okay so we're now going to look um, at the internal features now i'm using this particular diagram it's slightly different to the one you've got to label in the workbook um, i want it slightly different so you don't just sort of copy um, this uh, diagram so if i just um, go through the blood vessels again just so you're orientated with this uh, here's the aortic arch again those branches there go up to the head. Uh, here's the superior vena cava. There's the inferior vena cava, fully labelled. Um, this here now is the pulmonary artery, and you can see it branches off left and right because we have two lungs. Okay, so you get the vessel go into both lungs. And here you've got the pulmonary vein coming back to the atrium. Now what this diagram shows you that the other two didn't is of course you've got pulmonary veins coming from both lungs. So you've got two sets here of pulmonary veins uh, both going into the left atrium. Okay, um, so there's the blood vessels. Uh, by the way, this region here is still the aorta. It comes around the aortic arch, goes behind the heart, as I've said before. Right, so inside the heart then, there's not a great deal to see. Um, just to note that this, of course, is the right atrium. That's the left atrium. This is the right ventricle, and that's the left ventricle. So most of the things are labelled, but I've got to add a couple of couple more labellings for us. The first thing to note is there are um, four valves within the heart that you need to know about. Um, there's one valve that separates the atrium from the ventricles on each side. Now, in the diagram here, they've called them the right atrioventricular valve and the left atrioventricular valve. Now, you should know the other name for these valves. Um, so the one on the left is called the bicuspid valve. Um, now, bi means two. I'm going to show you another picture in a moment of the valves, but bi means two, cuspid means caps, uh, cusps or flaps. All right, so this valve actually has two flaps to it, uh, which you'll see better in a moment. The one on the right is called the tricuspid uh, valve. Now, the way I remember is the R in the tri stands for the right side of the heart. So that's how I remember which side the tricuspid valve is on. Uh, so this valve actually has three cusps to it, or three flaps. Now, the function of these two valves, the bicuspid and the tricuspid valve, is they actually prevent blood being forced back up into the atrium. All right, so the, va um, the valves there function to prevent what we call backflow of blood into the atria. Okay, uh, we'll talk more about the function of the valves when we do the cardiac cycle. So there's the two valves there. The other two valves are actually within the pulmonary artery and the aorta. So the valve that's in the pulmonary artery is called the pulmonary valve here. But can you add to that? It's actually more technically known as the pulmonary semilunar valve. So can you add semilunar valve to your labelings there? Um, the one that's in the aorta, again, is called the aortic semi lunar 
valve. Now again, those valves actually function to prevent backflow of blood into the ventricle. So it stops the blood moving backwards, as I've just shown by that arrow. All right, so they actually close to prevent backflow. So there's the uh, the four valves. Uh, if I just show you what they look like from a different angle, because the, this has actually been used in a in a previous question. Okay, so this image is a bit unusual, uh, but something similar to this has been used, as I've said in a past paper question. What it's showing really is uh, the atriums have been removed from the top of the heart. And what you're looking at now are the valves here that um, go into the actual ventricles. So this valve here uh, has actually got two flaps to it. This region here and that region here. So this is actually the bicuspid uh, valve because it has these two flaps on it. Now, on this one, it's not completely shown, um, but you've actually got two flaps visible here, and there would be another one about this region here. Can't see it in this view, uh, but that would be the tricuspid uh, valve. Okay, in the 3D video tutorial, I'll I actually show you the valves um, clearly. clearly. So, if this is the tricuspid valve, that's got to be the right side of the heart. This is the bicuspid, it's got to be the left. So, these two vessels here, um, these are the pulmonary artery and the aorta. And you can clearly see the semilunar valves in those vessels. And the semilunar valves have three flaps or cusps to them. So that's what the semi-lunar uh, valves look like. So um, there's the valves looking uh, from above at them. Okay, this image um, is showing the valves now um, in 3D looking through the ventricles. Okay, so this one here is the bicuspid valve. So you've got a flap there and a flap there. This one here is the tricuspid. Uh, again, can't fully see the three flaps on that one, but it is the um, uh, tricuspid. Okay, if we go back to this diagram, there are a couple of labelings I need to add on. Um, the heart has a sort of a point to it. Um, this is known as the apex of the heart it's the sort of the tip or the base of the heart and it also has a muscular wall that divides the left side from the right side of the heart and that's called the septum okay uh, the other feature I want to mention is the thickness of the ventricle wall now I've made reference to this in video one Okay, you need to know that the, the wall of the left ventricle has a far thicker muscular wall compared to the right ventricle. Now again, the reason for that is the left ventricle has to pump blood all the way around the body. So with the thicker muscular wall, it can actually contract with greater force. And when it does that, it pumps blood at... Um, uh, sorry, when it contracts with greater force, it creates a greater pressure and therefore it, it allows the blood to move with greater speed. Um, the muscular wall of the right ventricle, it's a lot thinner because it only has to pump blood to the lungs, which are uh, right by the heart. So it doesn't need to create such a, such a high pressure. Um, so I'm going to make a note of the those facts there that uh, you'll also need to write down. Okay, so I've written in uh, the important thing about the muscular wall. If I just box it off, I've squeezed it in here. All right, so uh, you need to know why the wall is thicker in the left ventricle compared to the right. Um, Okay, the other thing, um, it's not actually 
drawn on this diagram uh, so I'll just add it um, in uh, let's do it in blue attached to the valves uh, the, the tricuspid and the bicuspid valve not the semilunar ones are tendons and the tendons run from the valves and they attach to the wall of the ventricle by a muscle called the papillary muscle. So these things here are tendons. And um, the function of those uh, is actually to stop this valve from flipping inside out. Uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure created in both the right and the left ventricle. And if these tendons were not here, the valve would flip inside out, very similar to where to to an umbrella flipping inside out in a, in in high wind. All right, so you don't want that to happen to the valves because then they'll become damaged. So that's what these tendons uh, do, in partnership with these things called the papillary muscles. So I just want to show you those uh, features with this heart image again. So these things here are the tendons and these bulbous regions are the papillary uh, muscles. Okay, now both of those work together to prevent the valves from uh, flipping inside out. And what you need to know is that the tendons um, apply a force to the heart valves. Okay, now that force is often called a tension. Um, so the tension is actually a pulling force. So they actually pull on the valves and what causes them to pull is actually contraction of the papillary muscle. So that muscle will contract and it'll pull on the um, tendon so it'll create this tension and then it'll stop the valve from uh, flipping inside out. Okay, um, that's um, really everything we need to know at the moment for the internal structures. There are other things here, uh, but it's to do with the electrical activity of the heart. There's things that run down the septum and there's things actually in the uh, atrium. I do discuss those in the 3D tutorial, but I'll discuss them um, again when we look at uh, the electrical activity uh, of the heart. OK, so that's um, the end then of this video two on um, heart structure.